Christian, Muslims, and Jews have in common? Nothing. Nothing at all. I think it's a, it's a total difference right there. They're people. They're all people. Everybody can believe in whatever they want. They're uh, all normal people. Uh, we all have hearts and we're all human beings, so. I really don't know. They all have a religion? Other than that, I don't think there's anything in common. Yeah, I believe they all have something in common. They all have a higher being in common. They all have someone that they believe succeeds the world, someone that created this all. Even though it may be a different person from each one of them, they all believe in a God. They all believe in someone that's above them, someone that created everything. Well, they all believe in a God. Yeah, we all pray to the same God, you know what I mean? A lot of people might call it a lot of different names, but everybody pray to the same God. They all praise one God, not many. Do you think they all share like, the same concerns? Yeah. Yes, I think so, too. We go to like church and stuff, like all of them. Yeah, we're all trying to live, so I guess, uh, I don't know. I think we all have the same concerns, you know, we all trying to get ahead, you know. I'm sure they all want to, like, have world peace. They're worried about the safety of the world, religion, and all that. Pretty much. They all, they pretty much all want uh, peace and everybody to act according to what they should. What is your experience of relationships between Christians, Muslims, and Jews? Do you have neighbors, classmates, teammates, or even family members by marriage that practice different faiths? Why do you think there are so many places in the world where Christians, Muslims, and Jews find it difficult to get along? How can people of common roots in faith overcome these historical and present day conflicts? That's what we'll be talking about today. Jews, Christians, and Muslims, all children of Abraham. Hi everyone, I'm Catherine. And I'm Jack. And, and this, this is, is Real, Real Faith, faith TV. TV. The United States has been called the religiously most diverse nation in the world, according to Diana Eck, professor of comparative religions at Harvard University. Nearly one in every four persons in the U.S. is non-Christian. More than ever before, American teenagers are coming in contact with people of different religions. Differences that often result in stereotyping, suspicions, and misunderstandings. How can our generation help to plant seeds of peace? We'll be talking with our studio guests about this later in the show, but First, let's meet our spotlight guest, who is trying to plant the seeds of peace through her ministry. Born in Iraq and a Roman Catholic, Sister Olga Yakob has studied Islam, Catholicism, and Judaism. Currently, she is studying at Boston College and is the Catholic campus minister at Boston University. She is the foundress of the Missionaries of the Virgin Mary, a religious order in Iraq, and has done much to promote peace in her work as a youth minister. She is tiny in stature, but a giant in her devotion to promoting peace in war-torn Iraq and to people all over the world. Let's meet Sister Olga now and find out about some of the things that Muslims, Jews, Christians all have in common. Um, Judaism and uh, Christian and Islam religions, um, they, they all believe in, in one God, um, even though through teaching of different prophets, uh, but um, they all believe in one God, they adore one God. Um, and also uh, for me was interesting, the more I studied uh, about each of them, um, I realized um, the teaching in three of them focus also on trusting God through prayers and um, the, the mercy of God, that God is merciful and the love of God and um, the peace that God wants to his people. And um, I was also amazed that uh, in, in, in three of them, people are called people of God. Uh, that was very, very interesting for me to, to you know, re realize it when I was studying three of them. You know, as, as a human beings, definitely they, they all have the same concerns, the same uh, needs as, as human beings in their daily life. Um, so yes, as I said, even though they are, um, they have differences in, in the teaching of their religions, but uh, just as a human beings, they have same needs, same concerns. I like the way that Sister Olga said that the people of each religion were called the people of God in every religion. It just kind of fits together that way. Uh, one way to think about the relationship between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam is to think about your own family. Your siblings or other close relatives can seem so different from you. They have distinct personalities, ways of expressing themselves, or interests. There's competition for attention and for a share of the resources of the family. The difference in perspective and the conflict between the needs of each person causes arguments among siblings or family members. 
Sometimes the relationship can fracture so badly that family members don't talk to one another for even years at a time. It's a challenge to remember, though, that however different you may be, you still belong to the same family. You have the same parents, share the same values, and have common needs and desires. Let's see how our studio guests feel about this. Let's meet them. They are Lauren, Katie, Anthony, Alex, and Matt. What do you think Jews, Muslims, and Christians have in common? Well, I agree with uh, the teens in the street uh, that uh, they all believe in a higher being above them, and uh, they all follow and, and really are faithful in, uh, in most, most cases, you know? Well, for me, it's kind of like, it's not like they're different people that are thinking different things, you know? I, teens are teens, no matter how you look at it. We're all going after the same stuff. And I know with me, when I meet people on the street, I'm not thinking, oh, that person's a Catholic, oh, that person's a Jew, you know what I mean? You don't, like, like classify them. Exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, they're all the same. Because mm -hmm, we grew up with that. Like, in school, most of us, I know I, I did, but, like, they, all the teachers, they basically taught us, you know, you don't really ask those kind of questions. You don't ask about other people's religion. If they tell you, you know, that's, that's cool. You know, like, they'll talk about it, but you don't really go asking, you don't go looking for that kind of question, you know? Yeah, because you don't want to offend them. I liked that the one guy said that they're all, um, they all believe in only one God, and that's mm -hmm. really the main, I, I think, the main thing that they all have in common. I think that's a very important thing to bring up. Right, like, I think we share a lot of morals, you know? Mm -hmm. And also, I think we just all go through the same things. I know that I was invited to like four or five bar mitzvahs, and at the same time, I was making my confirmation. So I can relate to them, because we're both being confirmed into our religions. So we had a lot to relate to. Yeah. Right, what has been your own experience with different religions? And Basically, that all the religions feel that God wants the same things for them, to be, you know, peaceful, to love each other, and to have mercy for each other, and all those yeah, it could all, things. Yeah, it could all be different, but basically, that uh, everybody's God that they worship tells them the same thing, you know, how to be a good person, how to live your life, and everything like that, you know. Keep, That's like, good moral values, you know. It's kind of like what I said before, people are people, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all have a conscience. We all want to, you know, do what's right to other people and everything. It's not like having different religion influences that. We all want to be good people. So do you have friends who practice a different faith? Has understanding their faith helped you to grow in your own faith experience? That's what we asked the teens in the street. Let's check it out. I mean, all my friends right here, you know, all my boys right here, they all Christians. They all Christians. I'm the only Muslim in the whole group, but you know, I keep, I keep it, I keep it, you know, level. Other people's beliefs and other people's understandings of how they live and how they, their faith is doesn't really affect mine. I don't really know a lot of my friends' religions, like. <laughs> I got a lot of Muslim friends. I got Jewish friends. I got Christian friends, I got Roman Catholic friends. And when it comes down to it, it's really all about God. It comes up with all this conflict between different kind of religions, but what it really comes down is to God. Everybody believes in him, he's the main source. Not really, the only friends I have probably be of the Islamic religion, not too many other religions. Like I don't have any Jewish friends, just Christian and Islamic. Understanding like the Islamic religion, does that help you deepen your relationship with God at all? I don't really understand the Islamic religion. Like, I get pointers and stuff from my friends, so it just makes me have a different outlook on the situation. It makes me see it from a different point of view and a different angle, which we all need to do at one point in life. Look from someone else's point of view, because we all have different point of views and different things to say. It seems like most of the teens either had friends in different faith groups, or they didn't even know what their friend's religion was. So what do you guys think about this? How diverse is your group of friends? And how has having that diverse group of friends, you know, helped you understand your own faith? Well, I have a pretty diverse group of friends, like, religiously anyway. I mean, I have a couple Muslim friends, I have a couple Jewish friends, but we don't really talk about it too much. I mean, like, I'll have a Christian conversation with a Christian friend, and then, you know, my Jewish friends will have a Jewish conversation, but it's like, to tell you the truth, we really don't influence each other. It's not like I'm more deeply Christian because of like I see their religion as different or anything you know it's like their religion doesn't really affect me as much yeah that's like me I mean I have a big diverse group of friends and I we I got people from every religion you could think of and I mean it's never really an issue I mean we're just all people you know 
Well, I have a very diverse group of friends, like everybody, Christians, Muslims, Jews, atheists, and we'll have um, different conversations on like somewhat controversial topics. And like the teen on the street said, it's very interesting to see because like you get their different um, perspective and it's like a different outlook. And it, it kind of like makes you reevaluate like your beliefs and see your beliefs better. One thing I've liked is um, my Jewish friends kind of give you, when they give you a view of what it is culturally to be Jewish, uh, it tells you about how Jesus would have lived since he was Jewish, and it gives you a little bit of background on where some of the celebrations come from. Like, um, satyrs can help you understand the Last Supper, which was a Passover celebration. So. My group of friends, we do have diversity, but not a, a lot. Um, the majority of my friends are Christian, but the ones that are Jewish or Muslim, they teach us a lot about their religion and that some of their customs they understand more. And eventually it all links back to something. And um, I think the customs that we kind of don't understand in our religion, they can explain better. So knowing about those other religions can help you mm -hmm. also. I know I've been friends with one Muslim boy for the longest time. We went to the same Catholic grammar school and now we go to the same Catholic high school. And his religion has never been very much a part of what we would talk about, but it didn't inhibit any conversation. You know, he's just a really good person and we've always just been pretty close and it didn't matter so much what our major differences were because we have so many similarities. Do you think people of faith can overcome the seemingly inevitable conflicts? How can we learn to respect one another? There are different groups trying to build mutual understanding between Jews, Christians, and Muslims. The Children of Abraham Project in Michigan finds inspiration in scripture verses that tell us that Ishmael and Isaac came together to bury their father, Abraham. In the end, there is a reconciliation of sorts between them. The project brings together teens of all three faith traditions to break the cycle of fear, hate, and intolerance. This is just one example of planting a seed of peace. Next, let's go back to our interview with Sister Olga and find out what she has been doing in Iraq to plant seeds of peace. But we did have, for example, different conferences for uh, world peace, and we invited Muslim leaders, uh, which we call uh, the Muslim leader, we called him Imam. Uh, we called different Muslim um, leaders from different uh, cities and towns in, in Baghdad, and also um, many bishops uh, and priests from um, Catholic Church, Orthodox Church, Protestant Church, and we all together gathered for uh, prayer. And even we ask um, each of them to use a prayer uh, for peace from their own tradition. And that was very powerful. And even we did it in different languages. Because as you know, in Iraq, we have like uh, Arab people, Kurdish people, Turkish people, and Assyrian and Chaldean who speak, you know, Aramaic language. Um, so with all the languages also, we did it and all the uh, different ways or traditions of, of prayer. And that gave me so much hope that the dialogue is possible uh, despite of um, the differences uh, that we have. So as a church, what all the bishops and priests and even laity are trying to do is to um, focus on positive things, focus on dialogue, focus on forgiveness and mercy, and uh, focus on seeing face of God in each other. So uh, almost all the bishops and priests, they are trying through their homilies uh, to preach to people and to remind them that uh, we Christian people and you know, Catholic people, we are people of Jesus Christ who for forgave even people who crucified him. On the cross, Jesus said, you know, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. We are people of that same Jesus Christ who St. Paul said about him is the same Jesus of yesterday, today, and forever. Catholics are called to recognize that we are all created by God. And that God's desire for each of us is the same. Pope Paul VI wrote, One community of all peoples, one their origin. For God made the whole human race to live over the face of the earth. We have a responsibility to learn about our own faith. And to learn the truth about the beliefs of others. Next, Sister Olga gives us some advice on how to work for peace. So I think what is missing is um, that uh, education with open mind, 
about ourselves and about other um, religions and um, respecting one another. Uh, when, I, um, when I met with people with close-minded, uh, um, who they believe that they have the only truth and no one else. So those, those kind of experiences made me sad because I, I wish if people were those kind of people, if they could be a little bit more open um, to hear from each other and to have that dialogue. So the way of dealing with those kind of situations was um, first grace of God in uh, me relying on, on, on God's grace and in, in being strong in my faith and uh, loving those people even if they have different beliefs. And the second was through education. Um, I, I, I tried to educate myself in my own faith first, to be strong in my faith, to know how to answer questions about my faith, and then also to know, to know about their faith, because that helped me also to, you know, like show them where are those comments and how we can open a door of dialogue. Uh, the power of prayer is very important, and it's a big part of the process. Um, because um, not always have all the answers. And sometimes even we don't have um, the right answer at the right time that we wanted. will come when it's God's time, but sometimes we wanted the answer in our own time, and that is not possible sometime in the reality. And I know this is very hard, especially for your generation in this culture, because you were raised up with a way of asking a lot of questions, and you have to know the answer, and don't do anything without knowing the answer. You want to know it right now, and there is no, no patience, and you want to do everything in your own way, your own time. Uh, but in this kind of process, especially you know, growing uh, in your faith with, um, with other people who they have different beliefs, different uh, traditions, uh, you need to be patient. Uh, you need to be open, you need to understand others. And sometimes it's hard to do it by your own limit uh, as a human being. So the power of prayer helps you to be patient, uh, to be open, to wait for the right answer at the right time when it's God's time. So, uh, and plus the prayer gives you also a grace of light of the Holy Spirit so that your heart will be open for other people and your mind will be open to understand other people. Sister's so right. I mean, I think the most important thing to do when it comes to religious diversity is really just to remain completely open. And when you're open to everyone else and their beliefs, that's when you can really filter through. And it'll strengthen your own religion when you know the beliefs of everyone around you. So what are some of the other ways you can think of to help people of different faiths to respect one another? Basically, I think just to, you know, kind of like what Catherine said, you know, just realize, you know, we're all different and you know everybody has their own religion but you know none of which has to do with the other so you know you have your religion keep it to yourself you know if you if you'd like to talk to someone else who shares that religion you know that's that's a good thing to do but you don't need to necessarily fight over it see i i kind of disagree about that i think we should share our faith with each other and talk to other religions and try to explain our faith to them but you don't want to cause a fight you know like do it peacefully and respectfully. You don't want to offend them in any way. But at the same time, you could explain something to them that they've been wondering about. And you want to be strong enough in your faith to know if they have a question for you. You want to be able to answer that. Like, I used to drive my religious teacher crazy. Because in the middle class, I, she'd ask if there were any questions. I'd raise my hand and ask her a question, and she wouldn't know the answer to it. And that always kind of bothered me. but you know, you don't want to be put in that position, so you have to be strong in your faith. Yeah, I think that um, if we had a better understanding of, like, you know, they believe in their religion just as I believe in mine, and uh, it's pretty much just like a reflection in a religious mirror, you know? Right. I know what you mean. I always try to think of how much my religion means to me. Like, I value my Catholicism very highly, and I think if you put in perspective the way another person, say a Muslim, feels about Islam, I'm sure it's very near and dear to their heart, just like Christianity is to you guys. So if you keep in mind how much religion means to another person, I think it's easier to respect the fact that, yes, they're from a different religion, but I can... Relate to it, how you're Yeah, you can relate and understand where they're coming from. I think we should, like, maybe try to go out of the way to learn about each other's religion, you know, go to church with a friend, or go to, like, a temple or a mosque with a friend, and then that would help get rid of stereotypes. Yeah, because I think a lot of the prejudice just comes from people not knowing, right. you know. Just huge misunderstanding. Yeah. 
next time you hear about a holiday, say, hey, what is that holiday about? Next time you hear about a religion that you've never heard of, look it up. There's the internet. We have so many resources these days to find out about things we don't know, we don't, we're not raised with. Don't be afraid to ask questions. A lot of the world's problems are caused by misunderstandings, so if we do ask those question, the questions, they're going to get rid of the misunderstandings, and that could solve the world's problems. Well, I think we should give people, you know, the benefit of the doubt, because deep down we're all pretty much the same, and we don't mean to offend each other and everything. We also should keep a positive attitude, and know that whatever we do, no matter how small, will make a difference. Next, Sister Olga tells us not to be afraid, because even a little candle can make a difference and bring light into the world. Uh, because God didn't say, I will send my Holy Spirit to the people who are in their 20s or 30s or just to the adult people. He sent his Holy Spirit to all his children and you are child of God. I want you to believe in that because as I said, when you believe in God, his power will do tremendous work in you. You know, the King David, when he was anointed by the Spirit of God, he was only 17 years old, so he was a teenager, but he was anointed by the power of God to be king of people of Israel at that time and to carry the mission of God to the people of Israel. So why not you or your friends? You are called to be anointed as a children of God to carry his message, but just be open. King David was open to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. Be open, don't be afraid, be strong in your faith, have hope and have courage that you can make a difference. Even if, if your effort is like a little candle, you know, when you are in your room, try Katie, if you are in your room at night and turn the light off and just in complete darkness and light a little, a little candle, you will see that little candle will make a difference in the darkness of your room at night. So even as I said, if you see yourself or other teens, if they see themselves as little candles, their light will be enough to change the darkness that we have in our world today. Sister Olga basically makes me think that I, should, I shouldn't be afraid to just do the, the small actions that I think a lot of teenagers still have because we retain that innocence of when we were children and God talks all the time about you know, let the children come to me. He doesn't say, let the Catholic children come to me. You know? Good point. Yeah, also, um, as teenagers and younger people, we're still changing, like, our lifestyles and our views. And um, so I don't think we're as threatened by people who have different views and different lifestyles and different religions because they, they're going through the same thing. So whereas older people or adults who have settled in their lifestyle might be more threatened by someone who has a different lifestyle mm -hmm. because they believe that their lifestyle is the right one, otherwise they wouldn't have chosen that. And so they could be threatened by people with a different religion. You know, it's been my experience that like, you know, even as teens and everything, I, we just kind of get along, you know? And you know, it's an another thing is like, it's kind of pressed on us as we're with little kids, you know, like I can remember in preschool, being like in a big group, you know, you're playing with your blocks or your Ninja Turtles or whatever. It's like, you Ninja know, you Turtles. see like one kid who's, who's sitting out and the teacher always comes out and he goes, you know, make, make sure you, you include so-and-so, you know, just because I can remember in preschool there was never, never a kid who was sitting by himself. They'd always be in a group. Yeah, the cliques weren't there. Yeah, but uh, I think it's kind of up to us as this ge uh, generation grows to be less prejudiced because as we started... Uh, you know, we started, like Anthony said, we started without cliques and stuff like that. Uh, you know, the generation before us was all prejudiced and they were separated because of wars and all these conflicts. But I think now it's now up to us to do this because we're pretty much Generation X. Right, like this could be our cause. You know, I know a lot of older people are so worried that this generation is not going to do anything, but maybe this will be our cause. I mean, like, as teens, we have to be able to separate the truth from what the media shows us and everything. It's so true. I mean, how often in the media do you see the normal people? You only see the extremists. You only see the wackadoos jumping off of buildings and doing crazy things that are newsworthy, the things that nobody sees every single day. I mean, we see them every single day because we have TV. But that's our curse. But you got to realize that the normal people are the people who are helping each other out and the, those are the kind of people we all need to strive to be no matter whether we're Christian, Jewish or Muslim. You never see uh, two races shaking hands on the news, you know? 
You never see them getting along. But I mean, that, that stuff happens more than the bad stuff. It's just that they pick on bad stuff to sell. Yeah, the average person is never on like the news doing something huge. And it's the average person. There's more people like that. Well, you know, like the best thing we can do is like Sister Olga's ministry where it's getting to know people as individuals and the Abraham Project, which brings people together so that they can get to know each other. You know, we just get, pe get to know people as individuals and work together for a better world. What has been your experience of building respect and understanding between people of different religions? We want to know. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com. Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And one final thought. We are called by Jesus to love our neighbor in a spirit of humility and charity. Employing every peaceful means to resolve conflicts. This takes a lot of courage, a lot of faith. And a whole lot of love and forgiveness. So pray for peace and understanding, because as we know, with God, all things are possible. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.